Let's talk about stock investing, in particular, the three-legged investment strategy that yields a return in nearly every situation. We're going to talk about the conditions, we're going to talk about the focus, and we're going to talk about the approach to use this particular methodology. Again, we do not give stock advice. We are just sharing wealth strategies that I can document or I've seen clients use or I've helped clients use. I'm Justin Hit with Sustainable Wealth Secrets. So first off, you don't know which stocks in the stock market are going to increase in the near term. So this is not a day trading strategy. Also, when we hear about the growth of stocks, we often hear about it in the context of hype. So as I'm going to show you, it's already too late. And if if you don't already know this three-legged strategy, you're going to miss out on the upside of very easy-to-find opportunities in the stock market. Also, growth is easier when you have the right mindset because once a stock starts to grow, let's say you bought into something. We bought into silver uh, back when the silver was about to boom. I doubled my money in silver. I tripled my money in silver, and then I got out, and my wife was freaking out. She's like, you got to stay. You got to stay. We got to get more money. We got to get more money in the system. I stuck with an initial investment. I actually even took money off the table as the investment grew. But the hysteria, the euphoria when it hit the news back in 2000-something, it was already too late. And and, and let's start there. That strategy of buy, 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 sell, okay? This is a strategy that very early in the identification of these companies, you're going to have insiders starting to buy. Okay, these insiders are going to buy. They're going to keep it on the down low. They're going to buy it through uh, institutional funds that are moving money all the time. They're going to buy it as individuals, and they're going to buy it in their social tiers. So Warren Buffett buys a bunch of stock in something. He's got to report that. But if all of his friends buy something or his uh, you know covered corporations or closely affiliated corporations or a holding company or you know a company set up with a lawyer to buy something, Walt Disney bought all the land for, for Walt Disney World under uh, different companies and then consolidated them all later. This is the stage of early adoption where these insiders have, uh, whether it's research whether it's people like me doing analysis work, whether it's just knowing what's going on because they're insiders, they start buying early, okay? There's no talk about this in the news. In fact, the news may not even, you know, I not even know this exists. Then they, after they get in, they let their inner circle folks know. And by the way, how do I know this? Well, I work for a bunch of venture capitalists during the dot-com, and they use the same cycle. But these insiders get to buy out the original early adopters in some cases, but in other cases, the insiders start piling on. Their inner circle members start piling on, and everybody's buying into the increase. Now, with any stock, it's going to go up, it's going to go down, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. They're going to buy the drop, so it comes down a little bit. They're going to buy into it again, brings it back up. We're at the buy-buy. This is the second buy. The third buy is syndication. So now the inner circle members know about this stock on on the growth. They know it's going up. They start talking to their friends. They might even say, hey, guys, you know, this stock's going up. I got some good information from an insider. I got some good information from people in the know. This thing's going through the roof. So they syndicate their new knowledge. They syndicate their growth. And this is where the news media starts picking up. This is where you know these investors that have a little bit more public presence start buying. And ultimately, the stock goes up even more. It's crazy. That's the third buy. Now, the fourth, there is no buy on the fourth because at this point, the cat's out of the bag. All the media knows what's going on. The media is talking about the run on biotech. You know, biotech is where to go. Jim Cramer's on, on going, you got to buy, 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 buy on the, on the, the uh, biotech. And then what happens? Well, the, the insiders have already found the next opportunity and they need cash. This is one of the reasons I tell you to keep a lot of cash available because if you ever get these opportunities and you're an insider, early adopter, uh, anytime before syndication, you're going to make money because now that the public knows what's going on, the public investors are going to buy out the early adopters and that's when they start to sell. The insiders start to sell. But this now starts a cycle of where the public is doing a buy-buy, sell, 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 okay? 
Now, I have a diagram for this. We talk about it with private clients. I'm just giving you some behind the scenes of what goes on. The insiders buy, their inner circle buys, their syndication buys, and now the public starts to buy. Now, the public might have started to buy during the syndication because now the news media is talking about it and word has gotten out. Uh, but definitely, when the insiders are looking for payout, the public is buying like crazy. Now, when you sell a bunch of stock, what happens to the price? Well, the price goes down. So once the the regular investors, the outside people start buying the hell out of it, sometimes it's even institutional investors, foreign companies, foreign countries start buying this particular stock because it looks like it's going up. That's when the insiders start to sell. And they sell like crazy. They may even short the stock because they know that if they take their holdings and liquidate, they're going to get back their original investment. They're going to make a return on the money. They're going to then have money on the drop. Now, is this an illegal strategy? No, it's not. Is this a strategy you can take advantage of? Yes, it is. But understand that when you're hearing it in the news, it's already too late. In fact, I'm going to give you a practical example that's it's not necessarily come and gone, but it's an example that you can go and back backtrack or backtrace and see how it works. In fact, if you set up two timelines, one timeline is news media and the other timeline is insider purchases and, and trades, you'll see that the people in the know started buying long before the media runs their mouth and lets everybody know. Sometimes this happens on accident because somebody leaks something, they talk to each other at a party, and next thing you know, everybody's trying to buy this stock. But an insider, a a wealth manager, a family office, they know what to look for here, and they use research, and they use uh, methods that are beyond what a retail investor can mess with, and ultimately the retail investor buys out the insiders. So what's the three-legged investment strategy? Well, the three-legged investment strategy is in, in doing your research to, pit- to pick three companies, could be five, but most of the time it's only three, three companies in one of these sectors that's getting a pump, okay? Because you don't know which one of these companies are going to get a pump. You don't know whether it's going to be an S&P 500 uh, indexed company or it's going to be a, a little company or it's going to be a, a company that it was in the news years ago and has now finally got through their bankruptcy and they got a lot of investor cash and they're going to do something with it or somebody who's finally got a drug approved or somebody who's uh, offering a new – you don't know. You don't know, but you, you do know about the industry. The industry is very easy to see. So example with the COVID, which industries are going to benefit from a COVID pandemic? Well, it's going to be pharmaceutical industries. It's going to be home products that can be delivered. It's going to be online retailers. You pick three companies in that area. Now, you pick the three companies as companies that you would invest in even if they don't have a run. Okay, Having a run means that their their stock price runs up very quickly uh, because of insider activity or because of these early adopters. You pick three. Could have been Amazon. We don't want to do Barnes & Noble because Barnes & Noble are, is just primary books. Amazon's got home services, so we might look at Wayfair, might look at Walmart. Okay, All those companies during a pandemic could still deliver product because the government made the delivery service companies essential services. But then there's a pharmaceutical play, and then there is a the uh, medical services play. Now, here's the thing. You could take three legs in three industries – but most people who have discretionary funding, like like if you were an insider, you would have a family office or a private investor already doing these things for you. If you're making this decision yourself, you likely don't have enough cash available to spread it around into three industries. But you can pick three stocks in one industry. So you're going to take the three industries, you're going to get the best of three, then you're going to take the companies there, best of three companies there. You're buying as if it's a long-term hold. It's a value play. But you're also looking at where are their insider connections. So a lot of times we're talking about the relationships of individuals. So in my example here, I've got Pfizer, Madura, Benura, Johnson & Johnson. All three of those companies in 2019 
okay, this is before the pandemic, were closely involved with FDA individuals, with CDC individuals, and other individuals in the marketplace. So I'm looking at relationships, not necessarily the company's financials when I'm getting my general selection because all of these companies were having problems due to the opioid crisis. Okay. And just as a disclosure here, I did not profit from these companies. This example is a backtrace example and it is information that's already been used. I have no idea whether these companies are going to go go well in the future or not. This is not stock investing advice. It's a description of a strategy where there are timelines where certain companies have uh, government influence in a way. There's, so here's the criteria. Government's going to make a bulk purchase. Uh, the FDA has authorized something or some agency has authorized something. Could be uh, authorized the trading with a company that was been pre a country that's been previously sanctioned, and then it's something that is newsworthy. Something that if the news found out about it, they're going to pump it. They're going to talk about it every night. So uh, in the you you can tell what industry is going to go down when the pandemic started. It would be travel and and um, the hotel industry. So yeah, you can reverse this and you could short three companies, not knowing which ones will short. But most people listening to this don't have a million dollars to spread around three industries. You might have $100,000 to spread across three companies. And of course, I'm not saying you'd put all $100,000 or all a million into three companies. Very complex. But what we're looking for is times when the general population is distracted by fear. So right outside the 2008 mortgage crisis, there were opportunities like this. Anytime big money wants to get in early... You're going to be looking for insiders. The insiders want to get in early. They want to to get in where nobody's talking, where nobody's talking about it. Basically, where people are selling, they want to be buying. And some of these Pfizer positions, the Maduro positions, I did do a little bit of research as a disclosure. Uh, Some of these positions that I'm I'm mentioning were actually held long ago, 2006. Uh, They were held for many, many years. So this breakout that happened with these COVID-related vaccine companies... Uh, it, it can be planned for for years. It's not necessarily something where someone has cheated. Uh, it's just how the marketplace works. People who spend 40 hours a week or 100 hours a week researching stock find these three-legged strategies and they set up the position to, to profit from these categories. Um, but here's something to understand, the psychology of it. Nobody with money brags about the big win. These are the insiders. If you find in hindsight that somebody made a big win on some stocks and they didn't brag about it, that's an example of this strategy in the works. You want to be watching that person. It means they're they're paying attention. Their teams are paying attention. But you don't ever want to chase these elements when they come up in the news. So Bitcoin right now is in the news. Bitcoin's been around for almost 15 years. And if you're just hearing about it in the news, you're you, if you jump on that, you will be cashing out somebody who's been in there for a long time. It's part of the design. It's part of the plan. Uh, there's forums like Wall Street Bets. So in back checking this particular activity, uh, Wall Street Bets on Reddit didn't even talk about these these companies. They talked about how risky it was and how it wasn't a good idea. Well, if they're not talking about it, it might actually be an opportunity. If the number of COVID cases are being reported, And what reduces the number of COVID cases? Well, they were promising a vaccine would reduce the number of COVID cases. In actuality, it didn't. And they're still talking COVID cases, but they're not talking about the company stock that are creating these vaccines could be something happening. So to get to that sustainable wealth, it is a different mindset than simply everybody's talking about something I need to jump on board. Your research should be done already. Your decisions should be done in advance. I I actually know uh, investors who only trade quarterly. Okay, so they have orders in all the time, but they sit down each quarter and they they go over the trades, they go over the companies, they go over the research that's been happening, and then they make a decision on how to allocate the funds for maximum return. But they don't do the fiscal quarters. They offset the fiscal quarters so that their decisions are happening before a company announces their earnings, before a company presents. Now, with this particular strategy, 
if you start looking at from January 2020 to August 2021, you're going to see that a $10,000 investment would have yielded eight to 10 times return, like 800% return. But you'd have to stay in on what's happening rather than jumping in and out. So your actual return may vary. And in fact, if you stayed in one of these companies, you would have earned a significant amount of money, but you don't know which one of these companies is the breakout. So the three-legged investment strategy uh, diversifies over the three individual companies. Now, do you take your whole portfolio and do this kind of thing? No. When I did the silver investment, double, triple my money in silver, it was just a tiny part of the portfolio. Yeah, you never bet enough money on the winning horse, but a strategy like this could fail as well. What if the COVID vaccines started killing people? It is not unusual for vaccines to kill off a large number of individuals, even after they've been FDA approved. And that's just because individuals have pre-existing conditions, and it's hard to know whether that pre-existing condition is going to interact with the virus, and so on, and so on. But do you understand what I'm sharing here? Because we don't know which stocks will increase, because we don't have insider information, and because we are not... um, every day living in that investment in order to sustain wealth, you've got to have a diversification strategy that takes advantage of what folks are not talking about. When folks are distracted by fear and they have many choices, they end up having no one clear choice. So again, if there's five industries that are going to break out during a pandemic and you don't already know which industry you want to get into, because it's not part of your strategy, you don't just go pick one. It needs to be part of your strategy. People who build wealth are very deliberate about building their wealth. They aren't just flipping flipping a coin. Most of their money's in in four percent, five percent, blue chips, uh, you know, bonds and treasuries and stuff. A lot of it's in, in tax deferred items because they have so much income. They're trying to lower their tax basis, and, and cutting twenty percent off of their taxes is a guaranteed return. So when you see stuff like this, know that it's been set up in advance. It's the insiders getting in as early adopters. They're letting their inner circle know what's going on so that it kites the stock up a little bit, especially when they've had a few successes. Hey, I've made 20% on this stock. I really think it's going to go through the roof. I'm just doing you a little favor, letting you know. No insider information here, but just keep an eye on that. It's when the stockbrokers start getting on the phone. Syndication, by the way, is when the stockbrokers get on the phone. And then back in the day, they used to call everybody. They say, look, we got this breakout here. Well, they know that all their, their insiders had gotten their money. They've gotten their money in the market. And now they're working on the cash out. Again, it's not illegal. It's just how the system works. And if this is done over a multiple year period, multiple month period, most people don't even notice this. But again, the warning is, is if the news is talking about it, and the news is audience is everybody because they're selling commercial time. If the news is talking about it, you don't want to be in it. That's the time to start setting up your limit orders. It's the time to start looking at shorting. It's the time to start thinking about what are you going to do if this thing drops 20%? You know, you might want to take a little money off the table. But again, it is a, a complex world that you can easily uh, – benefit from. Now I'm sharing this with you and you know, just to be honest and fair and transparent, I'm sharing this opportunity with you and letting you know that I did not invest in these things directly. I did benefit from the rise in these in these Pfizer, Maduro, and, and Johnson and Johnson because they're a part of my uh, existing retirement plans. But I did not make a decision and invest in these things while I did know and had done research for a client uh, early in this particular activity. I'm not sharing any information that would not be readily shared with you if you interacted with a venture capitalist, if you interacted with a private investor, or you're in the industry. If you're in the industry, raise your hand. You know this happens. You you got your best clients in early. Now you're going to start syndicating by getting as many more people in so that you have a hedge for your best clients to, to walk away from uh, should the market change. Uh, but finally, it's not a bad strategy to understand that three legs – gives you diversity. It gives you some balance. So Johnson & Johnson, for example, has many other activities. They're they're a low risk when the overall picture goes here. Uh, Moderna is is primarily uh, 
the vaccine today. Uh, and Pfizer partnered with somebody. So Pfizer had a lot of challenges before they partnered with somebody. Maybe Pfizer isn't the play. Maybe it's the company that they partnered with. Now, I instead had uh, my cash put into some other investment that we're not even talking about right now because of my personal goals. And the reason I say that is that your personal goals trump the possibility of easy money. I know what you're going to do. You're going to go look from January 2020 to August 21. And instead of looking at the parallel between news media coverage and insider presentations, so, uh, you know, Fauci and all the, the CDC folks, and the uh, you know de- different medical companies talking about the uh, the COVID itself, instead of making a parallel timeline between the news coverage and the stock activity, you're going to see the stock activity and go, holy crap! I could have I could have made a fortune. I could have made a half a million dollars. That's not what this is about. This is about again understanding that there are underlying currents tied to relationships. There are situations that are called setups, and a setup is going to have where the government's purchasing in bulk where you have some kind of authority or uh, some kind of approval process so that so the media can talk about the approval process. Meanwhile, nobody's buying the stock because they're not sure if it's going to get approved or not. Well, if the stock, the company is a decent company, has good underlying financials, and you have the free cash, you can load up. Because one way or another, the stock is going to do something. But you don't want to load up on one stock because it could get denied some unforeseen consequence. And then if you only got money in one stock, you don't have the higher probability of two out of three doing well. And finally, it has to be something that the news will pump. It has to be a general human interest. Pharmaceuticals is great. Um, Folks aren't really talking about Amazon that much because Amazon, Jeff Bezos, the whole, um, I don't want to call it a dick swinging contest, but uh, you know the whole uh, CEOs in space reminds me of like pigs in space. Anyway, the old CEOs in space was the distraction to to Amazon's growth, but that's just one company. What you know, Amazon, Walmart, you know, are, I don't I don't know that one because I didn't have a commission there. Uh, anyway, I'm Justin Hit with Sustainable Wealth Secrets. This is again, this has not been investment advice. I just want to reveal to you the whole insider uh, element. There's nothing wrong with doing that. In fact, uh, consultants, researchers, they get hired all the time by investment companies, family offices and such. And very often, uh, in order to get a payout, you need the maximum number of people buying because buying of stocks is what increases their value more than the underlying financials of an organization. And in order to, to sell at a profit, you need a maximum number of buyers because when it comes time to sell, if there's nobody buying, then you can't make any money. If you have any questions about this or anything else, you can visit me at www.sustainablewealthsecrets.com where we talk about transforming business relationships into profits, the, the transformation of your income into wealth. Thanks for listening.